Now back to Inside West Virginia Politics with Mark Curtis. Welcome back to Inside West Virginia Politics. We're continuing our conversation with candidates for 2020. And of course, we have to bring in governor's candidate, Stephen Smith. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. I'd really love to start to talk about campaign finance because obviously the mm -hmm. reports recently came out and yours was looking pretty good. You have mostly a grassroots campaign, but you've been able to outraise all of the other candidates. What do you think you're doing that resonates so well with these people who are giving these small donations? Yeah, right, so the conventional wisdom is that you have to go get money from big corporations and lobbyists, and that's the only way to win. And what we're showing and what people around the state are showing is that there's actually a way to win specifically by rejecting that those donations that I think people are giving to this campaign uh, not just because they support me but because they support uh, an entire statewide effort that says you know what we're gonna reject those corporate donations entirely and build an independent campaign a campaign that's not bought and paid for but that's gonna mean you've got to pitch in too so one example of that as you as you mentioned this last report we raised more money than every other gubernatorial campaign combined, uh, and we did it with small donations. We've had 2,449 small donations, and uh, one of our opponents, Woody Thrasher, has had eight, right? And that's the kind of government we want, too, is one where all the people are pitching in, not where we're relying on one savior or billionaire or uh, king. So let's go ahead and get into some of these issues. Obviously, topping headlines all during the legislative session was education. The governor ultimately signing that omnibus education bill. What are your thoughts on education reform here in the Mountain State and what needs to happen? Yeah, so uh, I think like a lot of West Virginians, I'm a, I'm a public school parent. Uh, this education fight disgusted me because it was a small group of people arguing over things uh, that actually aren't gonna make my kid's life any better. Meanwhile, if we look over here, if we talk to everyday West Virginians, which is what we're doing, we've had 92 town halls. The exciting thing is the vast majority of West Virginians agree on what should change in education. We want higher pay for our teachers and school service personnel, but not just a little bit higher. We wanna compete with our neighboring states. We want a mental health professional in every school. We want to not spend one eighth of the school year testing. We want smaller class sizes. We want more uh, everyday education, civics and art and music and vocational ed and how to balance a checkbook. Now those would be big changes to our education system, but we didn't see any of that in a fundamental way in this bill because we have a government that's bought and paid for by private interests instead of a government that's listening to the teachers and students and school service personnel and uh, parents. So obviously education is something a lot of people agreed something needs to change. They don't know what another something everyone agrees needs to change is the roads. What would you do as governor to help fix our secondary roads but also to keep our highways up to date as well? Yeah, so again, this is an instance where it's the same story all over again. Uh, unless the current government can make money off of it, they're not interested in it. So uh, the roads issue, uh, it's not uh, an easy problem, but it's a fairly simple one. Uh, we put forward the state a maintenance plan uh, that if we were following, we would see a whole lot less of the minor repairs that are needed, right? And that's doing the cutting and the diversion, making sure uh, the water doesn't get onto and under uh, the roads so that we lead to the problems in the first place. Uh, we also should be play paying uh, highway workers more and that's not a radical idea uh, the legislature actually agreed to pay raises because we saw highway workers getting pulled away to other industries and were not able to do that work so two three years ago 2016 or 17 I believe uh, they passed uh, a change in the pay for highway workers so that we could stay competitive and do the best work possible and they haven't implemented it Right? Uh, and so you've got hundreds of highway workers who want to work and they want to keep their jobs and they don't want to go to a private company, but all they're saying to the legislature is, hey, can you please pay us what you promised to pay us? And it's that kind of negligence uh, that's so frustrating. The problems we have right now are solvable, but we have to go solve them. We have to put the interests of the people ahead of the interests of the lobbyists. All right, quickly, we have less than 20 seconds left. What do you want everyone out there to know about Stephen Smith as a candidate for governor? Yeah, 
I'm not gonna solve all the problems of this state. We are gonna do it. So if you wanna roll in this movement, uh, let us know. Um, you can find my email and cell phone easily online. We'd love to find a spot on one of our county teams or constituency teams, or maybe it's time for you to run for office as well. Thanks All so right. much. Stephen Smith, thank you so much, uh, gubernatorial candidate. And thank you for joining us on this week's Inside West Virginia Politics episode. We are also a podcast wherever you get your podcast. We'll see you next week.